Okay, uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm delighted to welcome uh, the two-time major winner and the Olympic champion, Lydia Ko, to the interview room. Uh, first of all, Lydia, um, how does it feel to be back playing in a major championship at St Andrews after your first appearance in 2013 here? Yeah, um, you know, pretty unbelievable in the sense that it's been that long since um, you know I came here. I think St Andrews was the second British Open I'd played at the time. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to come back to a golf course that I've played before. I must say I don't have like a lot of memory. Um, I think I was just trying to survive the wind and, and the conditions at the time. Um, but yeah, it's, it's great to be here and obviously this is the home of golf. So, um, you know, it's kind of like a bucket list place uh, for a lot of people. And um, yeah, I'm excited for this week to get going as well. Okay. And obviously after uh, your win in Paris, um, sort of riding a high at the moment, um, you're looking forward to contending this week and putting yourself in, in a place to challenge for the championship? Yeah, I was saying that I haven't played like particularly well on Lynx Golf um, in my uh, 11 or so appearances that I've played, uh, but there's always a time for a change and um, it would be great to have one of my best finishes here. Um, now I, I've gotten to love Lynx Golf more over the years. I think before I was so frustrated that it was windy and rainy and all of the things combined and you know, the conditions um, could play a big factor in you know, how our rounds are played. But I think I've slowly gotten to love it more and uh, you know, I love how that you have to be so creative when you play Lynx Golf. You know, numbers are sometimes very irrelevant. So yeah, it's, um, it's fun. I know, I, I know Dun Donald is a very different type of golf course to here, but to kind of get in the rhythm of playing Lynx Golf, uh, I, I really enjoyed that. And um, I think that's good, always a good preparation coming into the Open for us. Great stuff. We'll take questions from the floor. If you raise your hand, we'll get a mic to you. Uh, Beth in the front row. When, hello. <laughs> when did you find, do you remember when you had this shift in mentality to, to learn to embrace the conditions? Um, I think I, uh, when we played in Muirfield a couple years ago, there was one of the most fun I'd had, uh, you know, on links. Um, I don't think we played in like heavy rain that week. It was just, uh, you know, very windy, but I was like, you know what? Like not hitting a stock seven iron 155 yards is okay. And sometimes it might only go a hundred yards and like, it's funny um, in ways. And I think, it becomes a little bit um, more light out there. Um, I think last week I, I hit a really good drive on the ferry on my first hole of the day and I had 195 to the pin and I knew that my three would, would not reach the green. And you just stand there and you can't do anything about it. And it's, um, you just take the joy out of all that. But I think Muirfield was kind of a time where I stepped off after the women's open. I was like, I actually really enjoyed that. and. Um, you know, over, after that, I think every time I've played, it's just been more and more fun. And whereas before, I thought, like, why are we out here? Like, of all the sports, why did I choose an outdoor sport to, where I have to deal with everything? Um, but this is the beauty of it. And I prefer playing link style golf course when we are at the Women's Open. And you now, obviously, we're gonna get uh, we're gonna get a true test of that this week. And where's the gold medal now? And do you, have you taken it out and just stared at it and en enjoyed it? Um, it's, in, it's in my hotel room um, inside my backpack. <laughs> um, we, we didn't really get a, like a case for it, um, so we wrapped it up in a towel and, and then just put it in my backpack. Um, it was, you know, my sister and I were there in Paris and uh, we had a few more family members come over this past week. Uh, so my mom took a picture with it and, you know, my brother-in-law and my husband is here. So we're all just enjoying it. Um, but I think when, after Sunday this week, it will be more of a, a relief and in a way where I can take a step back and kind of take everything in. Uh, whereas these past couple weeks, I'm you know, also trying to play the best I can at these events, so I'm just focusing on what's right in front of me. But yeah, I'm uh, excited to get this tournament started, but then also excited for it to end, you know, after Sunday and um, really embrace what an amazing three weeks it has been for me. Okay, the next question from Brentley at the front. 
What do you remember specifically about 2013? Um, I would imagine you probably played a few holes on Saturday with the wind, but is there anything that still stands out from when you think back on that, that week, the weather? I am pretty sure I played in calm conditions on that Thursday, and I was like, oh, this is fine. This golf course isn't that difficult. And I don't know if it's because I said that. Um, the weather gods uh, said, you're going to get a beating the next day. Um, so I played in you know super windy conditions on Friday, and I was very humbled, um, to say the least. Uh, you know, it was it felt like a completely different golf course. You know, I played here even on Monday and the whole back nine apart from 10 and 11, I didn't hit a club under a three hybrid coming in apart from, and also apart from the 18th. So it can play really long. And I think the wind direction, whether it's just across to being like crossing into makes such a big um, difference around uh, this golf course. And especially with my ball, uh, ball shape. So. Yeah, it's, um, I don't uh, remember like one specific thing, but I knew that that was when I was quickly humbled uh, there. And I was like, you know what, don't, don't say anything about a golf course and don't ever say anything is too easy because you, you just never know. Um, you know, we could get sun and then five minutes later, it could be raining sideways. I'm sure you weren't surprised shortly after the Olympics to get asked about, you know, when are you going to retire, when are you going to hang it up. Um, when you look at some players in the past, like a Suzanne, who have kind of retired on the spot, had like a walk-off kind of going away, is that the type of person you are, or are you the more of the type of person who would just kind of finish out a season and then call it quits? Yeah, I think you just have to listen to yourself. Um, the way Suzanne did it after holding that putt at Solheim, I mean, she couldn't have finished her career on a, any more of a high. And I mean, she's pretty much accomplished everything that uh, she could have um, or maybe would have wanted. Um, so yeah, it's, it's you know very, I, I think, uh, circumstantial and depends on the type of player you are. Um, like, I think that was so cool what she did, the mic drop, but uh, it's, it's much harder to do when you're playing the British Open in a, in a couple of weeks uh, in, in my position. But I still, um, I've always said that while I'm competitively playing, I want to play at the highest level I possibly can and you know, continuously work hard with my team to become a better, more consistent player. So that's, that's the goal right now. And um, you know, it's kind of been, go, go, go since the Olympics. So I haven't really had a lot of time to think about everything. And um, I don't want to rush into any uh, decisions. But you no, know, this is definitely not my last press conference or anything like that. So yeah, it's, um, it's exciting, you know, what, what's ahead. And in ways, it can be scary, because I've played golf since I was five. And this is this is my life, um, whether I like it or not. And um, golf has given me so much uh, for me to be thankful for uh, on and off the golf course. So I think it's, it's not an easy decision, but I, have, I know I have a great support team and family that's so supportive and um, you know, great mentors that are gonna help me and give me advice. Uh, and I feel very fortunate to be in that kind of position, but all in all, I'm just excited that you guys aren't going to ask me what about that one point, what about getting into the Hall of Fame. I'm glad that that's kind of over now. Okay, Martin in the front. Lydia, when you spoke to us last week at Dundonald, you said you had spoke to your team after the Olympics and, and they asked you about a goal and you said maybe one more major. Would this be the dream one, given this event at St Andrews? And obviously, you know, Ryan Fox is one here in the Dunhill Links. Can you be inspired by that? Yeah, um, maybe I'll tell Fo uh, call Foxy and I one up to you, a kind of, because it's the Women's Open. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, I mean, I've always wanted to play well, you know, at a Women's Open. I do think it requires something a little different to maybe some of our other major championships. Um, you know, in Paris, it was, what happened there was almost too good to be true. I still think um, I feel so fortunate. And you know, people say, "Oh, it's because you've worked hard," but 
I mean, I don't know a single player out there that's not working hard. That's, you know, they're still practicing when it's raining and, you know, or if it's like 110 degrees outside. So everybody works hard and I just feel very fortunate that I've been given these, these opportunities um, and having these unbelievable highlights uh, in my career. But, you know, if that story tale, fairy tale happens again here, I mean, I've got to find a way to give back uh, because I just feel like I've been receiving so much and you know even a lot of overwhelming support um, after everything that's kind of happened. St Andrews loved playing the old course but also loved being in the town. Is that something you felt in your visits here over the years? Uh, when I came here in 2013, I remember I went and visited like the castle and um, did probably all those touristy things. Um, you know, I have family with me this week, so we've been kind of checking off all the restaurants with like the high reviews around here. Um, you've got to have fish and chips uh, uh, here, so I've had that as well. But yeah, a, a lot of things off the golf course revolve around food for me, um, and which is one of the things that gets me most excited about. I'm excited when we have good food and player dining or just like a lot of good options. Um, and there's, you know, quite a few around here. So yeah, enjoying, enjoying the little perks of it. And like, I don't know when St. Andrews is, is hosting the Women's Open again. Um, but it's, it could potentially be the last time I'm in this uh, town that I, I want to enjoy the little things. Okay, Chris, on the right-hand side. Just adding to that, Lydia, you also said earlier that it's a bucket list venue. Is that something that you're able to appreciate while you're out there playing, or is it just sort of a focus on performance? Um, you know, I've never always been, like, a big golf nerd or um so uh, it's never been like okay i want to go to these like you no know, top 100 courses but i know that for um some people that you know are really passionate and love these kind of golf courses this is this is a treat um you know it's held multiple championships but outside of that there's just so much history here um so yeah it's it, i mean it's hard to kind of take everything in when you're playing uh, just because you're focused on the shot in front of you and trying to um, execute that shot properly. Uh, but I think it's kind of when the week is over or when you're walking over the Silken Bridge and looking at all the architecture around here, that's when you're like, wow, I'm at a very special place. And, um, you know, this year is, is more special because I have my family with me and my team with me to uh, kind of enjoy this moment. And... Um, I think these, you know, photos that I take uh, or these moments that I kind of capture uh, in my mind are going to be the things that I look back uh, when I'm done with golf and go, wow, how fortunate was I to play two women's British um, uh, Open at St. Andrews and, and go to some of the uh, best golf courses in, in the UK. So you had the team photos on the on the bridge. That must have been a nice yes. nice moment for you. It, it's a must. Um, I think when I'm pretty sure when I was like 16 or 17 playing here, um, I was like, what are all these people? You know, taking their photos. Like, what are they gonna do with it? But now, like, as I've gotten a little older, and I think I'm able to appreciate. You know, it's these kind of things that make it. Um, like for me. Like Paris winning the gold medal was obviously the biggest, one of the biggest uh, highlights of my career. But outside of that, like just the experience of being able to represent your country, the fans that were, you know, surrounding the tee box on number one, like the whole build up, those are the things that I kind of take uh, away from. And um, I know that uh, when you're not in that position anymore, I, I'm probably gonna miss that. Um, so yeah, I'm just trying to take in all this and even though it may seem cheesy, um, I, I know that it's, I'm gonna feel like, oh, you know what, it's, it's a good thing I did that then. Okay, we'll take the final three questions in the room. We'll start with Michael at the back. Hey Lydia, I'm back here. So there's a lot made of the fact that it's been 10 years now since Rory won a major. I'm sure you don't need me to tell you it's been eight, eight and a half years for it's you. It's another stat. <laughs> yes, sorry, sorry, <laughs> I like my stats. But uh, yeah, you know, how much, can you articulate just how much of a personal frustration that is for you? And considering all of the incredible things you've done 
in that time. Are you as surprised as we are that there's not more majors there? Um, honestly, winning the first one in Evian was a bit of a surprise. Um, I had a little stat there following me too, you know, it was the last opportunity where I could beat uh, Morgan's amazing record of being the youngest um, uh, major winner. Um, and I was like, well, it's the last one. I'm probably not going to do it here. And, and I had a great final round and ended up um, winning and then won the a and Inspiration, now the Chevron Championship um, it, the following year. So th those were, um, it was a great period of, of time. Um, you know, I think as all of us tour players, we are, our goal is to try and peak at the majors, but it's, you know, easier said than done. Um, it's not just about, you know, you could do everything correct and it just could be that time of the month or you could, uh, you know, you could just be tired or get the wrong side of the draw. There's just so many um, variables uh, that you can't control as well. So I think it's, it's a lot harder and I know that every time Rory tees it up, like everyone asks him and obviously he played he played amazing at the uh, U.S. Open, but people just talk always just talk about his finish. But I mean, the guy played awesome, you know. So it's just uh, I think sometimes we get carried about who won, like who, like how many years it's been, like it's it's a drought, this that. But I think it's it's difficult, and um, you know all of us as players were trying to work to be at the highest level at that time, um, but. You know, sometimes it just doesn't go that way. Um, but I'm so, no matter what, I'm so proud to, you know, be a major champion. I know, no, I know that not all golfer has the um, opportunity to even say that. Um, but you know, whilst I am playing, I do want to, uh, you know, keep putting myself in contention. And um, I think if you do that, you're, I'm going to become more comfortable being in that kind of position. And I think sometimes. That's that's all you know. All of those things build up, and um, if it's going to happen, it's it's probably going to happen. Yeah. Okay, Swami. Uh, Lydia, you just said you started playing at about five five years of age, and you achieved just about everything there is to achieve. You know, the youngest world number one, youngest major Olympic medals. Do you think it's now more comfortable for you to play golf with less pressure of achieving more because you've done done it all? Um, I think I think we're all greedy in the sense that no matter if you know, I think Annika's won seventy something times and I'm sure she may be feeling like, oh she could have won eighty times and I'm like, wow, she she's, you know, one of the one of the greatest of all time, but I think while you're still doing this, you still feel like you can get better. And I think it doesn't matter if you're the number one ranked player in the world like Nelly or you're the last player in the field this week. Like we're all continuously working to become a better, more consistent player. Um, just with golf that you do have your little ups and downs, little roller coaster rides, but you know, you're trying to minimize those, um, I guess, the discrepancies. Um, but, you know, in ways, I guess it is easier, but we're all, uh, I think we're all competitive, and that's why I think we're playing at this level um, of sport. And, you know, we want to do better no matter, like, how much or how little you've achieved. Okay, Alex. Lydia, you answered one of the questions earlier, and it triggered a question for you now is, do you have a love-hate relationship with golf? Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, in some days it's hate, hate, hate. Um, and some days I, I could kiss my putter, you know? It's, it's just, I think that's just the way it works. Um, you know, I have walked off the golf course, you know, with tears uh, in my eyes from joy and, and from frustration. And I think that just shows, um, how you know deeply invested we are and how like I said like golf is my life as much as I want to separate it like I can and um, you know I think when I was younger I used to always think about the negative things of 
why can't I go to a school camp uh, with the other kids? Why do I have to go like practice after school? But you know, all those moments, um, you know, they have kind of led me to the journey and the place I am right now. And um, you know, I think like I've had my fair share of like emotional ups and downs and but that's just part of it. And I don't think that's because I'm just playing golf. I think that's with anything, um, you know, in life. And uh, you're gonna sometimes have the better days and sometimes not have a great day, but that's just, that's just life. And I think golf is a very, um, uh, it, golf puts everything kind of into perspective. And I think it gives you life lessons outside of just becoming you know, a better golfer. Okay, we'll take one final question just on the far side here. Hi, Lydia. Um, obviously, speaking about your relationship with golf, there, um, there's some people who are surprised that you're even contemplating when you're going to retire over the next few years. But I guess, does that come back to, you know, look at Lexi Thompson retiring at 29? Do, do we underestimate the, the psychological toll of competing at 10, 15 years at the very top? Yeah, I think there's just, um, you know, a lot of factors that go into making, um, go into, I guess, the equation of how a player decides to retire. Um, you know, I know some players don't really ever fully retire. You know, they play in the casual, no one or two, and you know, some like Soyan, you know, retiring at the Chevron Championship this year, Lexi announcing her retirement. I don't think um, there's a, like with golf, we're, uh, it's a little bit more flexible than other sports where if you hit a certain age, you're potentially too old. Um, you know, with golf, as long as we keep um, putting ourselves in, in good shape and good health, you know, we have the opportunity to be able to keep playing this sport, which is an amazing thing um, about golf. Uh, but yeah, there are, you know, the physical tolls, but also the psychological parts. And, you know, Lexi has done so much uh, for the game of golf and for the for our tour. She she is at every single pro-am party so it's not just what she does you know on the golf course inspiring these junior girls and the people out here but she does so much off the golf course as well and you know i'm sure that even when she does retire it's not like she's gonna go mia and not be seen again um, i'm sure she's still gonna be involved in golf in in some shape or form um but i think there are just different factors about it and as uh you know, as much as it's, we're very grateful to be able to do what we love and compete at a high level, I think there is the other side of things um, that you have to, you know, consider. And, um, you know, as, you know, as someone that's maybe like closer to that than uh, that point in my career than when I was a rookie, it's, uh, you know, you become to realize all of these things and, you know, respect, you respect the player for, the decision that she, uh, you know, came up with, and um, you know, it's it's their journey. So all we can do is just uh, clap and and say thank you. And um, I'm sure the whole golfing industry is very um, thankful to have such an uh, inspirational role model like like Lexi. Okay, we'll bring things to a close there, Lydia. Thank you for your time, and very best of luck this week. Thank you. Thank you.